Uh, this is far too heady for me. Hello, Jennifer. It's so good to see Hi. you again. Nice to see you too. How are you? It's uh, I'm I'm doing great. So thank you for asking. Uh, I love the show so much. I actually watched the first two episodes and then I stopped and I was like, I went back and I told my wife, I was like, you've got to watch this with me. It's oh, that's so fun. Yeah. So that rarely ever happens. So when she knows that when I say you got to watch this with me, it's a, it's a it's a great show. Um, first question. If you had made some different decisions and not pursued a career as an actress, what do you think an alternate version of you might be doing in a parallel universe today? Um, I don't know. I mean, I asked myself that question at some point in my life and I couldn't come up with a good answer. So I kept doing what I'm doing. Um, so I'm not sure. Change, so you could have kept doing what you're doing. I did. But I think about that all the time myself. I'm, I'm because I mean, I've, I've done various things throughout my life. And I, you know, if I'd stuck with anything, I'd probably be way more successful. But I just keep doing <laughs> multiple things. I get bored after like three years and then I'm on to something else. Um, what do you think is more likely, infinite parallel universes or that we're living in a simulation right now? Oh, my gosh. Uh, this is far too heady for me. I'm not I'm not clever enough to, to really to really know. I mean, but that's spooky to think about. I think it's a nicer thing to think about that. There are there are adjacent universes is a much night. I'd like to think about that rather than we're in a simulation, because that to me is. They're all kind of scary, to be honest. They all terrify me. Um, even if we're in a simulation, I, maybe it's just that we're on our way to another planet right now and we wake up and we're like, oh, that was a great way to kill 80 years. Good. That's, I don't know. Yeah. I'd like, I'd like to really believe that we're not in a simulation. I hope not. I, I mean, I, I, I hope not, but, um, now, I, one thing I wanted to bring up was like, I read that you had read the novel and to prep for this. So was there anything in the book that gave you more insight into the different versions of Daniela that you didn't pick up in the script? The script, you know, because Blake was our showrunner and Blake was involved in writing the scripts and wrote many of them himself. Um, the script really, I think, captured the essence of the book and of the character. Um, but I certainly went back and reread passages for the because you know there's a lot of sort of internal dialogue and and uh, and it's it's really fleshed out um, in the writing of it. Um, so I can't tell you like I'm trying to think back if there's anything specific I can say, but I I, I definitely like I had it you know earmarked all the passages sort of underlined and highlighted and I go back and refer back to them and think about them. Um, so I definitely used it as a source. Now you've got this great monologue in episode two that I really love about, you know, our lives being marked by the choices that we make and the path not taken. How has Daniela affected your own thoughts on, on free will and the, the choices that we make? Um, I think that I was so busy thinking about who this character was like on a, on a, on a, like a emotional level that I wasn't sort of spending my time thinking about the sort of abstracted concepts when I was working on it, to be honest with you. And so that's one of the things that I, better at night than I do. That's what I'm picking up. <laughs> I, I just think that that's one of the things that I really liked about the show was that it had this balance of like, we're in alternate realities, but we're also telling the story of a marriage. And so my job is kind of, you know, Blake is doing that stuff and, you know, the DP and the set design and all of that said that they're telling that story. And my job is to kind of tell the story of a marriage and of a woman that's like in this world, you know, uh, trying to, you know, sort out what's happening in her life and, and, and with her husband and in this relationship. So I, I guess I was sort of focused on that aspect of it. No, I do think, I mean, that's so central to the story as well. I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because obviously like the relationship between Jason and Daniela is, I mean, this really is, a, it feels like a love story at the heart of it. So d did you find any version of that relationship to be more challenging than another for whatever reason with you and Joel? Um. Well, the, the I had so, um, it's, it's interesting, like, I think that the the scenes with um, Daniela one and Jason one, I don't want to give too much away, but they're kind of bookended, and the the the, the 
scenes, the later scenes that we have together are, um, it's really complicated what's happening emotionally. So that was kind of interesting to, that was an interesting thing to, to think through, like how that might play out when they, when they are together again, you know, um, it was, it felt more emotionally delicate. Um, it felt like a straight, a straighter trajectory in a way The kind of like creeping first feeling like, you know, her with Jason too, like, okay, something's different. It's kind of fun. I'll go with it. And then like, okay, it's, different but it's also really different like it's getting kind of weird like what's yeah. going on something must have happened what's the thing that happened that you're not telling me but still in the realm of like this is all pretty normal stuff to then like oh this is actually there's something i can't put my finger on but it's wrong and i'm now right. sleuthing and in, i'm now in, i'm in now the per sleuth. i'm now the person who's like following my husband in a car you know like you know to see what's to try and piece together this mystery of what's going on. No, that's a great answer. I love that. Um, last question for you. You've also played Emma in Dark City and uh, Dahlia in Dark Water. So is Dark Matter the conclusion of your Dark Trilogy? Yes, it's the end of the Dark Trilogy. Hello, sir. It's so nice to meet you, man. I've been, I've been a huge fan of your work for what feels like years and years, and you're fantastic on this show. So thank you for your time. Oh, Chris, man. Thank you, man. I, I love I love your wall. It's so oh, much thanks, good stuff. Dude. Yeah, it's a, a lot of a lot of stuff is signed back here. I got old Flash Gordon here. I mean, it's it's a I need to take it all down. Honestly, it's too distracting. Oh man, um, <laughs> Flash. Ah, I got to tell you too. I, I mean, I love the show. Like, I, I watched two episodes. And then I stopped and I went and I told my wife, I was like, you got to watch the show with me. And that's like, that does not happen a lot. So, I mean, it's, it's really great, man. I, we really love it. Um, now, if you'd made some different decisions in your life and not pursued a career as an actor, what do you think an alternate version of you might be doing in a parallel universe today? Um, one would be a, um, a short order cook. Cause for some reason I thought, that was what would bring me the most joy. I think it's the idea of like quickly giving people the things that they want. Um, and food is, is one of my um, love languages of feeding people. And I love cooking. So I, I was planning that. And then I figured actually the culinary school roots were kind of co cost prohibitive for my family. So I went to a very affordable university in PA to get, get my English degree to teach. And and I fell here. I did that too. That's did you cool. really? Yeah, I did. I taught English for a semester uh, while I was working on my master's. Um, but well, yeah, the, yeah, same thing. And then I started doing stand-up comedy. So oh, same sort of thing. Where I, I mean, I feel like 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 what you're saying is, I mean, I, I've done so many different things over the years that uh, it, it could have gone any number of ways. Right. And it sounds like similar to you. I, there's um, constantness is not super precious to me. I'm I'm wildly open to change and that's just, I'm okay with it. And so w when you have that, the idea of like being something else isn't terrifying, you know? I think what I related to with this show more than anything was like, what if I'd made a, a choice beyond like who I am, but like if I'd, avo if I'd avoided this person or this situation that caused me sadness, could I have what would have happened to me? And I was stuck in that world for a, a year or so, kind of just ending as this show came into my life. And if anything, it just kind of helped ease that worry by let's explore it all and let's come to this conclusion that really everything kind of does happen for a reason if you're open to it, if you're open to those reasons that you weren't expecting, that you weren't planning for. Just pure in education, information, on how to give yourself a little more agency or how to find a little more peace with where you are. And so this show to me was a perfect, it just came at a perfect time. Uh, and it answered, it helped kind of like soothe some of the questions I'd already answered. And I'm hoping it'll have that effect because I find it to be easily one of the most en entertaining pieces of work I've ever been involved in. I think it's gorgeous. I, I would call it perfect in many, many ways which I never really do. It just all came together and all came through big hearts. Everyone involved is so invested and has been working for years or deeply 
to tell this story. Um, and so it's not only just going to be entertaining, I think it's just going to be a bit pacifying for a lot of people's fears of like, no, wait, I should I I agree have? completely, dude. I think that, I mean, the show is fantastic. And you've been in so much good stuff. I want to point out too that like, you've got experience playing like two versions of the same character, such as like Walton and USS Callister. Did your experience with Black Mirror influence how you approach playing Ryan in any way? Yeah, it, it was, it taught me a little more about the positivity there. Walton was connected through a certain like negative element. And then the situation of the clone Walton, of him understanding pain inflicted upon him, opened his eyes a bit to other people and to not taking only. Whereas, whereas real Walton only knew how to take. That's all he's ever done his whole life. Um, Blake was even more articulate about how the soul, to me, in my interpretation of his words, how the, sto the soul is the same. And what's different is these circumstances that adjust how we deal with reality. And like Ryan 1, confidence. Ryan 2, same guy, a little bit bitter because he hasn't been given the yeses. Um, and then Ryan 3, the one with the least amount of clarity on his value. So like Ryan 2 is, the bitterness comes from he's aware of his value. And so it's like, fucking, why didn't I get this? But he's still a caretaker. And Ryan 3, he never even clued in to how much value he has. So he's kind of the most carefree, but he's also the most lost in my estimation and kind of the hardest to play. Now, um, another thing that you're in that I love so much is Westworld. Both Dark Matter and Westworld feature complex sci-fi narratives. Between the two, which did you find easier to digest? Oh, they see they're both touching on deep, at least season one of Westworld and, and, and Dark Matter are both touching on serious human conditions. Uh, Westworld is just this reality, this sad reality that a human is, will often take as much as it wants, regardless of it, how it affects others. And so it's, it's this investigation of the greed that humans naturally possess, that maybe machines don't, and then learning, oh, that's what humans do. That's how we should be. And that's the reality. We're dealing with AI and all that stuff. But the fact that uh, Blake's dealing with super superposition, an actual like quantum physics, quantum mechanics reality that is provable, that two things can exist in the same space at once, that, a, that, a, that, a, that a, a subject can be a wave and a particle at the same time, and then expanding that into the quantum theory realm, where Schrodinger kind of tried to tamp it down, I think, with his cat analogy. It's a bit obtuse in my estimation, and it's a bit simplifying to say, like, oh, so you're saying this, this, that's kind of, it's like the, the tree falls in the woods. Well, of course it makes a sound. It's a little oversimplifying. So um, I think Blake's taking superposition and articulating it in a way, it's a real thing. And quantum physics is simply the study of light. It's a real thing. And so he's taking that and he's articulating it in a beautiful way no one ever has. Hey guys, it's so nice to meet both of you. The show is amazing. Like I, oh, I, I'll tell oh, you wow. this, I watched the first two episodes and then I was like, oh shit, this is awesome. <laughs> I, and then I was immediately like, I got to get my wife and we restarted it. So oh, it was great. thank you. Dude. I, love thank that. You. I was like, you got to watch this. This is such a, That's such the best. a crazy show. That's the now, best. First question. What do you guys think is more likely infinite mm -hmm. parallel universes or that we're living in a simulation right now? Mm. <sighs> wow. Um, I think the, I don't know, I think the simulation to me is more likely. The idea that, or in the simulation of a simulation of a simulation. I, in just, a parallel universe. In a parallel universe. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what it's both. It's all of the above. Yeah. Uh, which is, we're never going to get out of it. I uh, am living in a parallel universe. Yeah. I don't know. I I don't know that you guys are, but I, <laughs> but I am. And I just wanted to take this moment. To, I feel like I'm living in it. To say that. Yeah, you are, but we're not. Yeah, yeah got it. I'm the only one. It's weird. It's that not actually, it, That actually leads me to my next question because I'm curious. I could talk about this stuff all day. I, I love a lot of these theories. Now, if, if you guys had made some different decisions in your own lives and you hadn't pursued the careers that you have now, what do you think an alternate version of yourself might be doing in a parallel universe today? Wow. I, I mean, I had that moment. I was fully fully going, I grew up in DC and I was fully going home after college to write, um, to be a journalist. 
um, and really, really wanted to. Uh, my father had been one. And um, my mother wanted no part of me around the house. When she reads this, she'll be horrified that I said that. But I, she meant it lovingly. And so, like, literally, I just pushed me out the door and I ended up like going out to California and whatever and getting it. But like there was, I, I can, I could see that, that life, that world. Uh, and so many things would have been different and so many things wouldn't have happened. But, uh, but yeah, I would have been a journalist in DC. So two careers almost uh, materialized for me in college. I went, when I went to college, I, I thought I wanted to be an English professor. That just sounded great for some reason. I think like pipes and like cool totally. jackets. <laughs> and then I wrote my first 30 page in, uh, paper on like, you know, Chaucer. And I was like, wow, that sucks. I do not <laughs> want to do that. Um, and so then I just sort of, I was passionate about fiction writing and I did that all through college and, and wrote the draft of my first book then, but I didn't have anything approaching a career. And so I applied to uh, a law school and got waitlisted. And I think often about how close was that call? Like someone in the office was like, eh, he's on the bubble. Should we stamp it? Yes or no? no? No. And maybe in that moment, you know, this path of my life was chosen. Where if they had just been like, oh, whatever, we'll let him in. Bam. The question is what, hap what would have happened to the person who stamped you no if they had stamped you yes? What would have happened to their life? <laughs> well, probably nothing. We should find, we them, should find them and them. ask them. Thank them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, th actually, that's funny because I, uh, I also <laughs> went to school. I got an English degree. Uh, and my whole reason was because I was like, I literally just was like, what can I take where I take the least amount of math? And that was I, me. That was English me. Degree. English majors. Yeah. English majors. Hey, I love this. And then I started doing stand up comedy while I was working on my master's. And I was like, and then I had so much fun. I just quit school altogether. And I did that for, I started in 2009. And so, and it's somehow snowballed into me doing this. And it's just crazy to think about like the different outcomes that possibly could have happened if you just stuck with another thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's crazy. It's, it's a big mind. It's, uh, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. it's, I mean, it's why we're here. I mean, it's would nice. you have met your partner if you had done that? You you wouldn't have met your partner probably. Yeah, or or my, like I, I have a son that I would have had. I was going to say, I wouldn't have my son. Yeah. I mean, uh, like yeah. it, it's it's a crazy, crazy thing. It's crazy. it's crazy to think about. It really will keep me up at night. Now, Blake, having seen Wayward Pines adapted into a TV series and now Dark Matter, how do you feel about that process? And were the lessons or experiences from Wayward Pines um, did they any way like influence how you approach the adaptation of Dark Matter? Yes. <laughs> um, Wayward Pines was the first time I'd ever walked onto a, a film set and I was a starry eyed, uh, like 32 and looking at the first thing of mine being adapted. She thought it was going to be amazing and great. And a lot of it was, but you know, filmmaking can be tumultuous and there's a lot of that there. So it was an ex Dream scenario. Super proud of season one of Wayward Pines. Um, should have stopped there. Um, I would I, say my son and I watched the first season too. Yeah. We together we binged that one. Yeah. Stop it was there. great. We loved it. Yeah. Stop there. Just yeah. stop we didn't watch there. the second season, so you're, yeah. you're don't do you're it. You're safe. Don't you're do it. You're safe. You're yeah. safe. Um, but it taught <laughs> it taught me so much. It was like it, it, it's a full like filmmaking is like a full contact sport. Um, and I was lucky enough to be let mm. in and to actually see how the sausage gets made. And that's not something that a lot of uh, novelists are made privy to. And it took me a, a while to sort of recover from that and decide, do I want to have a part of that uh, in something of mine? And I finally, when the opportunity for Dark Matter came up, I decided, yeah, I do. But I, I've also learned a lot from it. And I know the things I don't want. And I know the things that I do want to shoot for. And it really, um, I mean, there's I have still a lot of friends, the, the Duffer brothers, came up on Wayward Pines. I came up on Wayward Pines. A lot of directors there. We, we call it literally Wayward Pines University because that's where a lot of us were thrown <laughs> into this crazy, amazing situation. And we sort of learned and took things from it that allowed us to go to the next step. And a lot of people came out of Wayward Pines and have gone on to do amazing things. It's all Balamange, the amazing director, just did a Murder at the End of the World. Yeah. Um, of course, Knight was instrumental in all of that. It, it was a unbelievable experience wow. now matt i know dark matter was originally intended to be a film but what specific storyline got cut that ultimately made you decide like this this is make a much better series 
Well, you know, a lot of it, to be honest with you, you know, and again, it was, it, 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 I think it in that parallel universe where we made that, um, it would have been a really good movie, but we wouldn't have explored, I mean, I'll just say it, we wouldn't have explored, you know, Jason 2 uh, on, the, on the level that we did. We wouldn't have explored Amanda on the level that we did. We wouldn't, it, it just, it, it, part of what is, I think, special about the show that we just made is that it's a, it's a very human journey. It's a, it's a character piece, you know, and you have to be with these characters and particularly with, you know, in terms of the, the sort of the overall arc of it, the longing that Jason one has to return to his world and his family, you have to feel that you know, in a very profound way to kind of earn the journey and, and, and to, and to feel what, you know, the, the hopelessness, the, the, you know, the, the, that he faces along the way. And then the joy, obviously, and I'm not giving anything away, but, um, I think I may have, but, um, do you know what I mean? And, and, and so, so in order to really invest, um, you need to spend time yeah. and, 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 and it was time that we, that we were giving up. There's, of course, another version of you and me that are sitting in chairs talking to you, explaining why, uh, why the we, film is such a better... We were almost going to do it we as a TV show. We were almost going to do it as a TV show, yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Matt, I got I to gotta ask this last question. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as a guy who works for comicbook.com, yeah. I'm a huge fan of the movies you produce, and I know you can't say much, but could you tell me if there's any chance in this universe that we're going to get to see Spider-Man and Tom Hardy's Venom come face to face in The Last Dance. You know I can't say anything. I know you can't, but I, I also <laughs> going to get fired in this universe if I don't ask. So about Dark Matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I respect the question and I can't answer that. 